of marketing, but I didn't actually know what I wanted to go into. Like a lot of us want to go into business, but we don't actually know what business. So when I, I just made sure that I was secured in terms of if an opportunity came, I would be able to go straight into it. So that's when I met my new partner, well, my current partner, sorry. Um, I met him in the gym and we got talking and really connected on a business level and a creative level and decided we wanted to just jump straight into it. So we opened our first business. I was 22, going on to 23 at that time. We opened tea bar um, in Birmingham, Arcadia and launched with Trevor Nelson. And that was the biggest thing in the city at the time. But that only lasted eight months. <laughs> Eight months after a lot of work, blood, sweat and tears, um, we had to close. Then we went ahead and opened Dine Desserts. Dine Desserts was in Worcester, uh, just one hour away from Birmingham. And we saw a market at that time, there was loads of dessert restaurants that were opening, but it was based on waffles and ice cream. That was something that I've never seen before. So we went ahead and tried it, but we wanted to do it in a place where people had more disposable income. So we went to Worcester, but again, that only lasted six months. Then we went ahead and opened another business called Top Grill, which was a really nice small grill um, restaurant. And that only lasted six months. Then this was kind of the last thing that I did where I started a nighttime delivery service for students in Birmingham and uh, I did that by myself with like my last 1,500 or something and that got me to about three months. So yeah, I know what you're thinking, like this guy doesn't know how to actually run a business. Does he? <laughs> but that was not the point. Failures are only hard lessons. That was just loads of hard lessons, loads of hard work but I did learn a lot of things from that. So what did I really learn? CRC, that is what I learned in my six years, well, actually four years of business at that time. Um, what does CRC stand for? And how does it apply to execution? <coughs> so as I was asked to come and speak about execution, I came across the CRC model which I thought was more powerful. And I thought that it didn't just apply to business, it applies to life. So how does it apply to execution? C, clarity. So the difference was when we started one on one nightclub after having so many failures, what we did was we got clear on what we really wanted. So in the past with the other business, we focused on making money. It was like, you know, I wanted to be rich, I wanted to make a lot of money. But this time we said, no, Let's not do that because we've done that four or five times and it didn't work. We wanted to add value. So at that time, the market in Birmingham was dead. You know what I mean? It was dead. There was nothing going on. Like even for us, we couldn't actually go anywhere. So we decided we needed to change the environment. So we need to get clear on what we really wanted to do. So we knew exactly the concept. We knew the, the dress code. We knew everything in detail, just like a business plan. And I think at that point was when I really valued business plans because before that I thought, you know, I've got an idea, just, just take it, like it's going to make money. But now I understand that clarity in the idea is very, very major. So when you're writing a business plan to the finest detail, you need to write down because how many people have goals? Everyone has goals. What, what do you have in your goal, for example? In, in my goal? Your goal, yeah. A football goal. What? <laughs> what? Can you give me examples of what you someone's written in their goals? Just one. Yeah. To be able to wake up early every morning. Okay. At six a.m. All right. So the intro, the, the the main factor about your goal there was the six a.m. You can't just say, I want to wake up every morning, like early every morning. But when? You know, do you want to wake up at three, at seven? At four. So the, the clarity in that, in your goals when you're starting something is the specifics. So you want to start waking up at 6 a.m. So clarity is a big factor. Next is resilience. So after we got clear on what we wanted and we actually came up with this amazing plan called 101 for this club that never actually existed in Birmingham, we 
started off and went to look for venues and when we found the perfect venue we found that it had a big massive stigma on it which was ghetto and no one wanted to go there because of the things that had happened there or the people that go there but we we believe that venue was the perfect venue so we had to then think how are we going to achieve this because literally there was nowhere else that would fit the the plan that we had for 101 so we approached a lot of people we had friends and uh, <coughs> professional advice and other experienced promoters and owners in the industry and they told us don't do it it's it's not going to work that place is tainted um that place <coughs> this and that happened there and um, we, we listened because that's what that's what we went there for so we listened to what they had to say but deep down i believe that we could do it so we then decided to go ahead with it and when we did approach the person that was running the club at the time they didn't actually want to sell it so we had to sit down and somehow convince someone that doesn't want to sell their business to sell their business i don't know how we did it but we did it <laughs> so <laughs> we ended up buying that business and changing the name to 101 and then we went from there but we really had to get resilient because even speaking to the guy even listening to what other people had to say it did not point towards what we wanted to do but we had to just get over it and just really believe that what we had and our plan was solid enough last point is creativity now after we did that we needed to be creative in terms of how we were going to one change perception of the club that we were taking over and then convince people to come there so the creative part was we had to come up with ideas on how to capture people's attention and convince them that the people that have taken this new club are not the same people or they're going to do something different it's not going to be the same reoccurring problem all the time so the first thing that we did in our marketing strategy was instead of creating a video of someone dancing and singing or you know trying to re recreate a, a party scene and put it out and say a new club is launching in Birmingham we decided to do poetry so our Saturdays was called release Saturdays so I have a friend um, called Nigo True does anyone know Nigo True yeah he's a good friend of mine and I spoke to him I said I'm opening a club and I really want to take a totally different angle and um, I need you to create something for me to do with releasing because releasing means when you come to the club you let go of all the problems that you have and you just have fun you know leave all that baggage at the door when you come to 101 you need to let go and have fun so he created an amazing poetry that we did the shot for with a really expensive camera just spinning around him and uh, we put that out as the first content and everyone was just blown away like i've never seen a poetry literally he did a one he did a one minute poetry based on releasing and um, we did a video that we posted as our first content to promote in the club and everyone was capti captivated by that and that got us some traction so that made people believe that you know what the the people that have taken these are thinking very different so they gave us a chance and we put more marketing content out and after that we ended up getting a full club weekly and now we're two years on so the model that i have i came across basically fits exactly what i've been through and um, i believe that when you understand this model that you have a high percentage of execution because it starts with clarity in terms of your idea on what you're working on to the highest detail because it's your idea so you're the person that's going to know it the most it comes to resilience because just like anything else when you begin to start to to find how you're going to do it you're going to have issues and a lot of people think after two or three you know uh, attempts that you know it might not be right or it might not be but you need to believe in what you're doing and you need to stick at it and the last point is the creativity which is you need to put your own mark on it you need to think outside the box because there are a lot of people who are clear on what they want a lot of people who are resilient but your creativity is never the same as another person's so the more you put your own personality 
on your idea, the more you're going to stand out, even if they are resilient or they are clear. And that's how um, that's how you get a higher chance of executing an idea. Um, so, fifty pound note. Let me tell you a quick story about the fifty pound note. In August two thousand and sixteen. After we had failed about four or five businesses and I had nothing left, I went back to work, uh, working in traffic management. I was one of the guys that was holding the lollipop sticks outside, basically, when um, they're doing roadworks and you know you have to let people go. But it was paying decent, so I just thought, let me get into that and get the hours in. So I was doing traffic management, just working, and um, I remember I felt at that point, you know, how many people have failed in business? How many people have failed twice? How many people have failed three times? Four times? I think that's why we're best friends. Um, so, so yeah. So basically, after I sat down, I sat down with my partner, and um, at that point, I had nothing left. I traveled to Africa because I felt like my head, I was going to get depressed, basically. After so many attempts and all my money that I spent and saved up through college and uni, I didn't know what I wanted to do anymore. I didn't know whether I should carry on or just go and get a normal job. So I went to Africa, went home, and I was inspired. I came back and I sat down with my business partner. At that time, he had gone through some medical problems and uh, he had a cornea transplant, so he couldn't even see. So we sat down, he was in a situation, I was in a situation, and he said, if I'm honest with you, all I've got is 50 pounds left. And I said, well, I haven't even got anything left. I don't know what's going to happen from here. So he said, I'm going to try that faith thing that you do, and I'm going to, I'm going to just believe. So he put that 50 pound on the table, and that's when we started talking, and we came up with 101 Nightclub. And three months later, we got the venue. And two months later, we relaunched the 101 Nightclub. Oh. Two years later, I'm here, and we're booking some of the biggest artists in the world. If when you were 20, 22, you said? Yeah. Obviously, if you don't mind, how old are you right now? I'm 27. Well, I'm nearly 28, actually. Yeah. Woo!